Okay, thank you everyone and welcome to the final day of the Diapoint Virtual Family Picnic. Uh, my name is Pamela Durant. I'm the founder and managing director of Diapoint ME here based in Dubai. And as most of you know and have heard me tell the story, in March we were planning to have a face-to-face -face event and then COVID arrived and we postponed it and COVID is still here. So until we can come together again face to face, we are doing this virtually. And this particular session, I am so incredibly excited and giddy and all of it. Um, we have with us Team Novo Ambassador Brace Dakal. He was actually going to come to the event in Dubai and meet everyone face to face. Um, he lives in Spain, so he was going to come all that way for us, which means so much. And we're so happy that the technology allows us to do this and speak with you today. Before I officially introduce you to um, Grace, I want to share a video um, in case you've not heard of Team Novo or maybe you don't you know, know much about them. So I want to share a video with you um, before we begin, just to give you a little bit of background about what Team Novo does. Let's see, I think this is the one. Yeah. <laughs> Two decades ago, an all I didn't post I can do would not have been possible. <clears throat> Eight years ago, World Week, Team No More, <laughs> shared it. Nobody took us seriously. We'll be proving them wrong every step of the way. People would I be even more than just actors. We were sons, daughters, husbands, wives, mothers, fathers, and we are more. If we have each other, we are changing ideas, and we're not slowing down. Our community has survived, and together we've thrived. We're a community of champions. We're taking diabetes into the new century. Let's write that story together. Diabetes only chooses the champions. So that is just a little bit of an introduction to Team Novo. And as I mentioned, Brace is here with us. He is a Team Novo ambassador. Um, he's ridden with Team Novo for several years and he'll tell us more about that. Um, he was diagnosed with type one diabetes when he was very young, but I will let him introduce himself and tell his story to you. Um, so without further ado, Brace, thank you so much for joining us today. Hello everyone. It's uh, a pleasure, as I said, Pam, uh, for me to be here and hopefully, hopefully in the future we will meet in person and I'll be able to tell you our stories uh, face to face, which, which is always good. And at the moment we have to, you know, we have to do it like this. Um, you, you probably saw a little bit of the video. Maybe some of you have known a bit of Team Novo Nordis before this, um, but uh, there's, there's, there's a great story behind this team and there's a great story behind each member of this team because of the reason that uh, all of the riders in the team have type 1 diabetes, all of them. Um, I've, I used to be one of the riders. Uh, I raced for Team Novo Nordis for five years uh, from 2013, 2017. And uh, of course, I live with type 1 diabetes as well. Uh, I was diagnosed when I was seven years old. And it was not, uh, it's not, it was not an easy path, uh, I can tell you. Um, at the beginning, people didn't believe that I could live a, a normal life. And they told me not to go play with my friends and not to ride my bike, which I loved because I loved uh, riding, riding my bike. And, and I still love riding my bike. But I was told not to do it um, because of diabetes which doesn't make any sense. Uh, we exercise is one of the best tools that we have to manage diabetes and, and to be happy and riding bikes uh, is a great tool to be happy. So, um, but yeah, I grew up in that uh, atmosphere and uh, doctors and teachers and uh, coaches, friends, they, they all told me, but you, you have diabetes, you cannot raise your bike. You, you just, you know, should have fun, live an easy life sit in the couch and go for a walk and not, not many things that you can do. And I was a little bit of stubborn, so uh, I wanted to prove them wrong. And when I, when I was 18 years old, 
uh, I met this this coach of one of my of my teams that told me, right, so look, look uh, diabetes is very complicated. You you won't be able to finish a single amateur race in, in your life. And despite of these questions, despite of these uh, comments that I was hearing, I, I didn't give up. I, I, I kept trying, I kept trying, I kept trying. And two years later, I was uh, signing my first professional contract. Not, not, not an amateur contract, but a professional contract with uh, my beloved team, Novo Nordisk, where not only they were going to support me with type 1 diabetes, but all my teammates have type 1 diabetes. So all of us understood each other. All of us knew what was living with type 1 diabetes and we could support each other and we knew that we could race bikes. As Phil said in the video that you, that you saw uh, a bit before I started speaking, at the beginning we were thought, we were considered as a charity team or like a joke of a team or something like that, even worse things. Um, they believed that we would not uh, last more than a year competing at the level that we were competing. And this was 2012, end of 2012. And today, 2020, we're still here and with three more years to go, at least with, uh, with Novo Nordisk. So um, we've proved what's possible with diabetes. I proved that I could ride bikes. I proved that I could finish amateur races. I proved that I could finish professional races. Our team has won races uh, in Rwanda, in Philippines, we have worn many, 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 many jerseys, many awards uh, in professional cycling, and we're growing every year. And so we want to inspire, we want to educate people on the possibilities with type 1 diabetes. There's 16 riders with type 1 diabetes racing against the best in the world. So uh, why can't you achieve your dreams if we are fighting for them and we are achieving them, right? So uh, I want you to... Uh, see that team Novo Nordisk, in Team Novo Nordisk is the motivation and the inspiration that uh, you can follow your dreams. You can, uh, you just need two things. I always say that you just need two things, working hard and managing your diabetes properly. Once you have done these two things, you, you're on the path for success, whatever you want to be, a professional cyclist, professional sportsman, sportswoman, um, whatever uh, career that you want to follow in your life. If you manage your diabetes, if you work hard, then you'll get there for sure. That is, is, I think, probably so true. While I don't have diabetes, this is kind of a reoccurring message I hear from so many people that have diabetes and that are doing it successfully. And you and your, your teammates, I mean, we, we've seen it. And some of us on, on this call have actually seen them when they were in Dubai. And it was truly inspiring. And you're not just racing in the same races. You're beating the, the people that don't have diabetes. Like I said, before the call started, we saw Charles Planet in 2019 win several sprints. Um, and before that, also other teammates as well. And so you're not just doing it, but you're doing it really, really well. And in many yeah. cases, like better than so many other people. And I always say that, you know, kind of type one diabetes is almost this kind of superpower. You have this other indicator of when you're training and you're at your optimal health or at your best. And do you feel that, does it really kind of give you that insight? Because nobody else has to check their blood sugars. I mean, if your pancreas is functioning well, then it's, it's a certain number. But does yeah. that, do you feel that gives you a little bit of an edge that you know when you're really training well and you're, you know, slept, slept well, ate well and all the other stuff? I believe it gives us an extra point of uh, knowing our bodies. We, uh, we are really aware of when we have to eat or, or the importance of recovery and the importance of uh, sleeping and the importance of eating properly and eating the, the right thing. Um, so, so diabetes gives us this advantage. Um, we, we have a lot of knowledge about our body that other riders might not have it. And in professional cycling, everyone knows their, their body perfectly. Uh, even you have diabetes, if you, if you don't have it. But we, we always go that a little bit extra far, uh, thanks, to, thanks to diabetes. And, and of course, uh, the fact that we, that we keep uh, monitoring our blood glucose, it helps us uh, prevent uh, during a race. And um, we also, we also can, can use that to avoid, for example, 
running out of energy. We, even if we see that the, our glucose is going down, then we can react, we can eat, we can drink whatever we have to eat and drink, and then avoid that lack of energy in an important moment of the race. So uh, yeah, diabetes is, I always say that diabetes is just one more condition in our life. We, we need to sleep well, we need to eat well, we need to recover well, we need to train well, and we need to manage our diabetes well. That's it. That's it. There's nothing, there's nothing else. Of course, uh, as long as we do manage it properly, then uh, it's just one more condition. And so at what age were you when you decided to, um, you know, try out for Team Novo? I read in your bio that you were inspired when you were reading um, a Spanish version of a diabetes magazine. And there was another athlete, I assume Javier, I assume yeah. he, he's also Spanish. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. By the name. Okay. And that inspires you to consider um, trying out for the team. And yeah. how did you come to that decision where did you feel intimidated um how how was it so uh yeah i was reading that magazine um i didn't know that there was any uh, more people with diabetes competing in professional sports and suddenly i discovered that not only in professional sports but in professional cycling there was a there was a guy that had type 1 diabetes and he was a spanish and so for me, that, that meant a lot that said like, okay, if he's, here, if, if he's there, uh, I can be there, you know, and uh, it was a great motivation. Then later in the years, uh, I remember uh, I had the chance to, to meet Javi once I joined the team. It was great. Uh, I arrived to the airport and he was there and to me, he was like my, my hero. And that was, that was a fantastic moment. So once I saw Javi in the, in the magazine, then um, I started to think that I could maybe uh, get there, get uh, arrive to the professional peloton. Uh, but I, I always thought that I didn't have enough level to race for this team. So uh, for a couple of years, I didn't contact the team. I didn't, um, I didn't try anything. I just kept training and, you know, trying to demonstrate racing for uh, elite national teams here in Spain. Suddenly one day I was uh, already really tired of uh, these kind of director, team directors and coaches that were telling me not to not to stay in cycling, you know, they, they told me to retire and everything. And, and once I was tired of listening to that, I said like, okay, let's contact this team. Let's see if they can help me out. And I contacted one of the co-founders uh, of the team. Uh, I asked for advice and he quickly uh, delivered me to the coaching team. And uh, well, they started to give me advice. They checked um, my numbers, my data, my trainings. And suddenly one day they, they called me up. They said, Bryce, you, you have an invitation to join the team. So I joined the team of my dreams. <laughs> yeah, that I'm sure it would be as a, as a person with type 1 diabetes and to have someone that really understands and, and gets you at that level it must be so satisfying, for lack of a better word. And the connection that you have with your teammates is probably even deeper um, yeah. than, than, than others. How many months a year is the actual cycling circuit? And then how many months in addition to that are you all training? Is it 12 months or are you on a few months and then off again? Yeah, it's, it's usually 12 months uh, is year round. So we, there's usually a recovery period of a couple of weeks at the end of the season where we ride very, very easy or even we don't ride at all. It depends on how tired you are and other factors, but uh, for the rest of the time, we're riding every day. And uh, our, our guys do 30,000 kilometers a year by bike. Uh, they train four or five, six hours. It doesn't matter if it rains. It doesn't matter if it's hot, if it's cold, if it's windy. We ride every single day. We work hard. And then besides the work on the bike, we go to the gym. We spend a lot of time recovering because it's really important as well to, to recover. So it's a 24-7 it's a job pretty much. Wow. And do you have any, you know, let, okay, let's start. Do you have any favorite races or favorite courses that, that you've done that have just been, that you've really enjoyed for, for whatever reason? Yeah. What's your favorite um, race? There's, there's, there's quite a few in the United States and the United States, the, the racing format is a little bit different than Europe. In Europe, we are like a, uh, cycling is very traditional where we long races four or five hours uh, 200 kilometers races uh, in the united states they like a lot of this kind of race called criterium which is 
this is a one kilometer circuit in the middle of the city and it's really really fast really really fast and uh, I enjoy that kind of racing as well so uh, there's quite a few criteriums in the United States and then I loved to race the Tour of Rwanda uh, it didn't go re very well for me actually I have to be honest uh, I was very tired already at that point of the season and so it was not my best race but uh, I loved to ride my bike, to race my bike in Rwanda and see how, how cycling is lived there because it's, uh, like it's the national sport. <laughs> it's like they, they all love the Tour of Rwanda. I think it's amazing. It's a fantastic place. And, uh, and generally, I, I, I always enjoy racing my bike everywhere in the world. I, I had the chance to go to visit 35 countries. Thank you. Thanks to, to Team Novo Nordisk. And so I've, I've had fun in every, every of them. Wow. Was there ever a time? So when I was watching it, this was in 2019 and I watched, I went to the start or finish where it, depending on the location. And there was one late night I was watching and working on something at the same time. Everyone else in the house was asleep. It was the replay of what had happened that day. And one of the writers, I don't remember who it was, but I saw him actually, as he was writing right up to the side of the car where I think Phil Sutherland was in the passenger seat. He stuck his finger out to do something to check his blood sugar, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I was, I don't know how fast you're going at that point. I was like, Oh my, <laughs> nobody's awake. I wanted to go wake everyone up in the house so they could see it because mm -hmm. unless you have someone in your home with type one diabetes or any diabetes, you would not appreciate how difficult that would be to do. Yeah. What is kind of, or can you share, do you have any of those kind of like, stories what is the you know maybe i don't want to say strange but the most challenging thing that's maybe happened to you during a race where you've had to kind of do some different maneuvers or something to check blood sugars or something diabetes related where you have to get really creative yeah um i i, I don't really have a, like a particular uh experience with that because we we are really experts in uh, managing our diabetes and and uh tracking our blood glucose so we, if we have to do it we do it if we have to if we're riding 60 kilometers an hour and we have to bring our hand back to the pocket and get our cgm and check it and then put it back then we do it at 60 kilometers per hour that's not a problem we handle our bikes really well and and we have a lot of experience with with our diabetes management so but yes sometimes uh, if uh, your glucose is not ideal and maybe if you, ha if you need to uh take some insulin, then you, you go back to the car, you get the insulin, you inject it, and you give it back to the car, and then you go back to the peloton. And you do that not stopping. Because uh, in a cycling race, if you stop, then the rest of the riders won't, won't wait for you. So uh, you, you, you better learn how to do it uh, on the move. Yeah, you won't catch them. I think what happened was the, um, the rider, he told me that the top of his lancing device had flew off or something, so he couldn't really check it. He mm -hmm. just had to manually do it or something. Yeah. Amazing. And for those of you on the call, I don't leave all the questions for me. If you have any questions, please, as always, type them, you know, type them in the chat um, or you know, please let us know. You can send your questions because Brace is here to answer any questions that you might have. Yeah. Um, also, in addition to writing, you're, in your bio, it says you're also currently studying um, and working for, you know, your ultimate goal is to work for international organizations like the United Nations yep. um, and focus on peacekeeping, security, or social affairs. When do you have time to do that? <laughs> I'm, I'm actually living a, living a, a crazy life because I'm, I'm busy all the time. I'm uh, traveling the world with the team. I'm, I'm not racing anymore. So that's uh, something that allows me to focus on different things. When you're racing as a professional cyclist, then you have to focus 100% on, on that, on riding, uh, training, recovering, eating, sleeping. That's your life. Um, right now, um, being an ambassador, I don't have to take care of all those things as much. So I can just ride my bike and uh, I don't need to recover really well for the race in the next weekend. And uh, so I, yeah, I want to finish my degree in the university, which I had to leave when I, when I went, uh, as, as you said, I'm from Spain. And when I was racing for the team, I had to go to the United States. Uh, I lived there for five years. And so I had to stop university. Um, now I restarted the gang. And as you said, I want to end up working United Nations or something, something like that. Um, after, uh, besides that, I'm 
still an ambassador for the team. So I travel the world, not right now with COVID, but uh, in our uh, prior uh, normality, I was traveling the world and uh, giving speeches and doing these kind of events that we are doing today. Um, I'm also involved with a little uh, woman team, a woman cycling team here in Spain um, as a sports director. So yeah, I'm, I'm trying to keep doing a lot of things and, um, you know, uh, I want to make the most of my life, be happy, uh, do whatever I believe I can do and, and give my best. That's it. Amazing. So here's one question um, that Salma has. How often would you check your glucose levels during a race? Oh, and a second question. Is there a certain sugar level that you aim to have before the race? Yeah. So um, during the race, we check as much as we can, as much as we believe we have to check it. Uh, it's really important that we keep monitoring it, uh, especially, especially to prevent. So that's why we have a CGM. Uh, with the CGM, we can see our trends. If we are going up, if we are going down. Um, if we have to eat, if we don't have to eat. Um, so yeah, we check it as much as possible during the race. If we, if we, if we have to get our CGM uh, every 10 minutes and check it, we, we check it. Of course, keep in mind that in a cycling race, we are doing an incredible, huge effort. And, and so uh, it's really, really important to keep our blood glucose in target. Um, for the team, for the second question, we, we do have a, a target for the team for professional cycling. It's only valid for professional cycling, which is uh, between 120 and 180. But that's uh, just a target for professional cyclists in professional races. So um, that's the target that we, that we use when we're racing and training. Um, for you, it might be different. So I totally recommend to talk to your doctors and uh, your specialists to, to let and to know which one is the target that you have to follow. Yeah, good advice. When I had a session with a nurse educator the other day and we were talking and almost every answer to questions with diabetes sometimes is it depends because no two are ever alike and sometimes the situation might be different. So for yeah. sure, it's always good to, to double check with what your doctor recommends. Yeah. Um, we, ha we had a lot of questions actually this came up um, yesterday to our panel, people with diabetes, and from some of the kids, like sometimes they'll be in situations where maybe people don't understand, um, or they might say things about having diabetes or make certain comments like, you know, can you eat that? Can you do that? Um, do you get comments like that often? And if so, or if not, how would you advise them to handle that? Yeah, I uh, get comments all the time like that. Yeah, you know, I, um, it's very common that people think that because, of, because we have type 1 diabetes, we can't eat certain things or we can't do certain things. And that's why Team Novo Nordisk exists, because we want to change um, all these kind of questions. And we can, we want to, our... our our, our mantra, let's say, is inspire, educate, empower people affected by diabetes, but educate is, is a part of it and educate people affected by diabetes and not affected by diabetes. You know, people that doesn't have type 1 diabetes and they need to learn that we are just a person like them and we can eat the same things as them. We just need to manage our diabetes, take our medication, etc. right? So I, I personally don't let myself being affected for uh, this kind of comments. I believe it's normal that people, doesn't, people don't know things about type 1 diabetes. Uh, it's, it's normal. I just try to educate everyone. And when, when I get these kind of comments, I explain them, yeah, of course I can eat this and it's perfectly normal and I just need to manage my diabetes. I need to take my medication, etc. Right. So um, I, don't, I don't let those things to uh, affect me personally or mentally. Did you ever have a time in your life when, um, like when you were younger, or maybe sometimes everyone always asks about teenage years that maybe you were having um, diabetes burnout or anything like this? A lot of people talk about that. And that's a very common question as well. Yeah, uh, I've seen many people having diabetes burnout. I've been very lucky not having it. But of course, I've had periods where, you know, I relax a little bit more. Um, at the end, we are living with this condition 24 uh, 7. I've been at, uh, I have type 1 diabetes for 20 years. So it's normal that there are some times where you don't focus as much and, you know, your diabetes management is a little bit, uh, a little bit worse. But uh, um, 
I just let myself to have a few days like that, and then you know back to back to proper management because I I understand and I understood from day zero that it's crucial for my future and for my health to manage my diabetes properly, and so. Sometimes when I'm tired or I'm not paying too much attention to it because I'm yeah, mentally tired or something like that, it quickly comes to my mind the, the, the bad outcomes of that. And uh, I, I quickly use them for, uh, to go back to, to a proper management. But of course, uh, it's, it's normal. And I understand that uh, people have uh, diabetes burnout. And if you have it, it's really important to speak up. It's really important that you to your friends, to your family, to your doctors, speak up and say, look, I, I can't, I, I'm, I'm burned out of diabetes. I, I can't do it. And it's important so we can all work together for, to get you back on track and uh, try to solve the problem because it's really, really important to keep the proper management all the time. Great. We have a question from Emily. She is 11 years old and she was diagnosed when she was seven, like you were. Mm -hmm. And her question is, um, can you use a pump when you race? Would it be easier rather than injecting when you're cycling? Yeah. Uh, hi, Emily. Um, yes, yes. Uh, some, some of my teammates used pump. Uh, last year, I think no rider used a pump in the team. I think now there's one or two guys that are using the pumps. That's a very personal decision. The, the rider, the, the, the person with type 1 diabetes have to decide uh, whether he wants to use or she wants to use a pump or uh, regular injections. I've always chosen uh, regular injections. I felt more comfortable with them. My diabetes management is really good with them and I don't, feel, I don't feel like being hooked to a machine all the time. And other people have a pump and then they, they manage the diabetes perfectly. They live comfortably. So um, that's a personal decision between you and your doctors and uh, whatever works best for you, that's going to be the right thing. Great, thank you. Yeah. My son pumps, but when he does sports, he does like to take it off. It, it, I think okay. there's probably a certain freedom to, to doing that. Yeah. Um, but like you said, it's a personal choice Yeah, and it just really, really depends. And I think, you know, sometimes I guess with type one diabetes, you don't have a lot of choices. So whatever you choose to manage it is the best, the best choice for, for yourself, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, other questions. I know there's some other young type ones listening or young athletes as well. Because I don't want to take up all the question time. <laughs> Very quiet today. It, we're, we're just like at the end of the week and school starting next week. So I think also people have been really busy getting everything ready to, uh, yeah. to go back to school as well. That's been a lot of discussion about that today. Um, so tell us, let's talk about food. What's your favorite food? And is it something yeah, that's difficult food. to, you know, cause a lot of people, I mean, and with type one, cause we're always looking at, you know, how many carbs are in food and food, it becomes an even more important subject. What are some okay. of your favorite foods? Well, I love to eat. <laughs> so I love every and any kind of food actually. Um, I, I love a good plate of pasta. Uh, if, I, if I'm exercising, I, I, I love to eat a good plate of pasta or, or homemade pizza, for example. Um, but I, I usually eat quite healthy. Um, I, like, uh, I love salads, I love uh, fish, I love meat. I love, uh, yeah, many, I, I love to eat uh, healthy, but some, once in a while it's okay to, you know, uh, go, go and uh, be a little bit naughty. I think like that, that, that one ice cream or whatever, whatever you feel like. Um, I love to drink coffee. I drink uh, liters and liters of coffee <laughs> every day, which, uh, yeah, to me, to me, it's you know, I like it. Um, and yeah, I generally enjoy all, all, all any kind of food. Uh, there's one that I love. Uh, it's uh, Lebanese food. Lebanese food mm. is one. It's a curious food that I that I like. Um, Thai food, Indian food, I like. Uh, I also like them. Um, I enjoy spicy. So yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I like I like any kind of food. I'm not very very picky on this. But yes, of course, I try to uh, eat healthy uh, as much as possible. And then you know, <laughs> yeah, that's good. And as an athlete, sometimes I guess you can eat a lot more of your favorite things. You, or you know, anybody can eat, but 
yeah. if you're always on the move and exercising, you don't have to, to yeah. worry when, about it. When we, when, when you're an athlete, when, when I was a professional cyclist, then you, you have to, you, you have to keep a really good nutrition and uh, it's, it's really well set. Like oh, we eat all the time, the same things, you know, salads and complex carbohydrates and lots of protein, lots of protein, which is really important to uh, recover and regenerate muscle. Um, but of course, diet is perfectly well controlled uh, on and off the bike. Once you're not a professional cyclist, then you can you know, enjoy a little bit more. <laughs> so are your t the, the teammates that are racing and you're along as an ambassador, are you eating what they eat or are they watching you eat something I else? I sit on a different table. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, Selma asks, how often do you train? Ah, so when, when you are a professional cyclist, you train every day. Uh, every day. Once in a while, maybe you have a day off if your coach considers that you, that you need a day off. But uh, most of the times you train every single day. Very different works. Sometimes we work strength training, sometimes speed training, sometimes endurance training, sometimes recovery day which is just riding a couple hours very easy on the bike and stopping for a coffee and uh, so it changes all the time right now that i'm not a professional cyclist i i'm very busy with other things so there are days that i can't train and you know that's life i'm in university i'm managing a team i'm working i'm doing these events so not all the time i have time but i try to i try to ride as much as possible i, I still enjoy and love riding my bike and it helps me managing my diabetes really well. Like sports is like uh, the, as, as the, as the founder said, Phil, the, 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 the man that was talking in the video, uh, he always says that uh, sports is the one billion job, the, how, how does he say it? Uh, sports is the one billion, no, I don't know how to say it. Well, it's, it's, the, it's, the, greatest, it's the greatest tool to manage our diabetes. It's, uh, it's a free medicine to treat diabetes. Yes, I've heard him say that as well, but I don't remember the exact words. The exact it's words, very yeah. powerful that it's, you know, the closest thing that we'll, we have right now to, we don't have a cure for diabetes, but it's certainly one of the best ways that, that we can manage yeah. it. Yeah. And exactly. another question, have you ever had a situation where you could not race because of high blood sugars? Sometimes nope. I cannot play cricket because of high sugars and it brings me down though, even, even though I do everything to manage my sugar levels. That's yeah. So, um, so no, uh, not not in our case because we 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 are all the time all the time taking care of our diabetes. So in, in racing days, it's, uh, we we are especially focusing on that. Um, it is true that with competition, sometimes uh, because of the high effort, because of the being nervous, because of uh, adrenaline. Our, our blood glucose spikes up, but we try to prevent and we, we see that we are, uh, are getting to the race and then our sugar levels are not where they have to be, then we start acting from now, from now. And every five minutes, every three minutes, every 10 minutes, we are checking and checking and checking and we try to bring it back. But uh, yes, of course, we, we have type one diabetes, we're humans and sometimes we are high, sometimes we're low, um, that's, that's normal. But uh, thankfully, I don't have any records of people in the team not being able to compete or uh, because of a very, very high blood glucose level. Uh, of course, I have to say then I have to add that we, are, we always have a medical, medical staff with us. So they, they take really good care of us. And that's really, really important. We, we trust them so much. Yeah, that's a good question. And I've seen before where the team, I don't know if you, they, do they still do it where they would share videos and they talk about the, that day of the race and they'd show kind of, this is what my blood sugar was. And this is what I experienced when I was racing. Do they still make videos like that on their um, um, social media? I haven't seen, I haven't seen one uh, since they got back to the competition, but I, I, I believe they, they will keep doing them yeah yeah, they, yeah. Should, they, they should they should do it yeah yeah yeah. so yeah um, and i'm sure they're they're still out there so if you are a young athlete i think those are really interesting to watch mm -hmm. because then you can hear from team novo what happened that day and they they sometimes they share the picture of their cgm um yeah. chart for the day yeah. and they talk about what happened and and it's very very interesting and very insightful and very yeah. inspiring as well too yeah, I, I really yeah. like those. And you, you will see that our numbers are not perfect. We're not superheroes. We are 
uh, as I said before, humans with type one diabetes. So, uh, and sometimes we go high, sometimes we go low. The, the most important thing is not having your blood glucose in target all the time. Uh, but uh, if, if it goes out of the target, then knowing how to react and react quickly and knowing perfectly your body to, to know how much insulin do you have to take or how much carbs do you have to eat or, or what you have to do to, to get out of the bad situation. You know? So yeah, they're really interesting. And so when you're not training and not going to school, it sounds like you're, you're training a lot all the time. Um, when you're not training, what, what do you like to do? Do you have any other, do you have time for other hobbies? <laughs> yeah, I try to uh, take care of my mental health as well. So <laughs> it's really important to have fun, to disconnect your brain sometimes from your routine. Um, I love, I love music. Music is one of my passions. So I dedicate a lot of time to listening and discovering new music. Um, back in the past, I even tried to play an instrument, but I didn't, I didn't have time to uh, keep mm -hmm. studying it. So I stopped it, but I started to learn uh, how to play the piano, how to play the guitar etc so yeah uh, yeah music is one of my passions and then traveling uh whenever i can travel i'll i'll, I'll be traveling driving my car like uh, whatever i enjoy i enjoy so much but um i'm really happy just going out and going for a walk stopping for a coffee meeting my friends um, you know doing something else um out of my house uh, I, I as long as i'm moving then then i'm fine like i'm happy nice what is your favorite type of music or musics more than one, if I'm sure. Yeah, musics. That's the musics. That's the, that's, <laughs> yeah, musics. <laughs> so um, I I really like uh, a certain kind of uh, electronic music, which uh, underground electronic music, not not pop electronic music. Uh, it's a uh, very weird music. So you will call me a strange guy if you listen music no. with me. <laughs> <laughs> um, besides that, I enjoy a lot of things. I enjoy rock. I enjoy uh, even classical. I enjoy soul. Um, yeah, music, music is very special for me. Uh, I can listen a certain kind of music and then liking it. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's complex, but uh, a wide range of genders and, and music. Do you have, of course, not when you're racing, but do you ever listen to music when you're on your bike? Or that's probably not the safest thing to do, but. Yeah, yeah it is not, <clears throat> sorry, it is not safe and it's forbidden in Spain. You can't ride your bike ah. with uh, earphones. Um, that's so good. You, you, you can, but if police catches you, then <laughs> you're going to get fined, of course. So, um, yeah, so I, I don't do it for safety and for legal, obviously, uh, respecting the rules. Um, I used it to do it back in the past when it was, when, when it was permitted. Um, but now I prefer to focus on the road. I'm aware that we are riding a bike and we have cars passing really, really close to us. So we, we need to pay attention to the road. Yeah. And you're probably riding really fast as well. So that yes. can be, it's yeah. not like, you know, yes. other people are, yeah. But if, do you, do you ever train at home or are you always out on the road? Like, do you have a stationary setup at home or are you always riding out? Yeah, we, we sometimes, sometimes you have to train at home. Um, if it's uh, like a really, really, really bad day, I, I'm, I'm just kind of cyclist that loves to ride in the rain. Um, mm. I love riding in cold, rainy days, windy. So I, I used to, I used to train all the time outside. But there's a lot of people that uh, don't like tr uh, training with the rain, for example. So they they have a stationary trainer um, at home where you just hook the bike and then you pedal. It's like a, yeah, mm -hmm. it's like a like a nice setup to to train at home. But I try to go out all the time. I I enjoy I enjoy riding outside. Okay, wow! Even in the wind and the rain, Even that's the amazing. Wind. That My probably makes you really oh wow. So uh, and you rain, you yeah. you said earlier you're like well we're not superheroes, but the more you talk, or like any team no teammate, I I think that we would probably all disagree. You or got some. <laughs> Superhero <laughs> tendencies. Um, <laughs> no, it's it's really true. I've hashtagged this all across social media that not all superheroes wear capes, and you guys are just certainly so inspiring and really, really superheroes. Um, any other questions from from our attendants? Because I have more. And I can keep going. I can talk to Braze all day, but I want to make sure that you guys get your questions answered. And I think we have a few people listening um, that might be newly diagnosed 
And I know, you know, you emphasize that how people told you in the beginning, you know, take it easy and not, not do so much. Um, and for, for people that might be just newly diagnosed or parents might have small children newly diagnosed, do you have any words of advice or w words of wisdom that, that you would give, that you would yeah. tell them? Yeah, definitely. Um, for parents and for uh, kids and anyone that uh, recently diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, take your time. Take your time. Allow your time to learn. Uh, allow, allow yourself a bit of uh, time to yeah, learn how your body works, how is the new thing. Uh, this is your normal life and you have to adapt to it. And it's, uh, and it's better to uh, you know, adapt diabetes to your life rather than adapt your life to diabetes. So learn, uh, do the right thing and uh, you know, manage your diabetes. Don't get pressure. And of course, don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on your regular activities. If you were playing sports, then you'll be able to keep playing sports and doing it safe. You just need to learn how to how your body works and how to adapt to the new situation. So um, just, you know, it's, uh, it's complex at the beginning, but uh, if you put a little bit of work and a little bit of motivation to it, then you'll learn quickly and then you'll go back to your regular life before, before the diabetes. You just now will do it with type 1 diabetes. That's it. That's great advice. And because you were seven, do you, do you remember, um, you, I guess you probably do the time when you were, when you were diagnosed because seven yeah. would be old enough to remember. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I do remember. I was, um, I was feeling very thirsty and I wanted to go to the bathroom all the time for months and months. And, uh, in, in school they were, uh, telling me off because I was asking all the time to go to the bathroom and, I didn't know what happened, but it was true. You know, I wanted to go to the bathroom. And, and so, yeah, I, uh, one day I just uh, was in a restaurant with my mom. I passed out. They, they rushed me to the hospital. And then it's when I got diagnosed, so I perfectly remember that moment. Uh, it was not a very happy moment. And uh, I always say that the, the doctor that entered the, the room, the hospital, to tell me that I had diabetes um, gave me a very bad perception of what diabetes is because when uh, he entered the room and he said like Bryce your life is not going to be normal anymore you have type 1 diabetes you have to stop to do everything that you do and, um, and that is quite the message that we don't have to deliver to anyone to anyone um, it's much different if someone enters the room and says like okay you have now a new condition you have now type 1 diabetes you have to manage it properly then go back to your life that's it and yeah, so I remember that moment and we tried to avoid these kind of things. We tried to educate everyone on this. Um, diabetes is not going to change your dreams. It's not going to change the path of your life. You just need to learn and keep doing it. Great. Yeah, what a, what a crazy thing to say to someone with type one because that's yeah. obviously, look who we're talking to. This is so not true. Yeah. Um, and a question just come in. So Kevin has asked, are you taking any extra precautions during COVID because of type one? Yeah, so um, I, I'm checking all the preventions that every single person should take. Um, I'm trying to be smart about it. I'm trying to, I'm washing my hands, I'm wearing my mask, you know, especially here in Spain. I don't know if, if that happens over there, but here in Spain, it's uh, mandatory to wear the mask in public. So um, that's, that's, that's a good thing. I believe it's a good thing because we, it's, it's protecting us all, right? Um, for diabetes, no. Like, I don't think uh, diabetes uh, have to mean that we are, well, of course, we have to be extra careful and we have to know that uh, we have a, a condition that can, if we get COVID, then we, we can maybe have a, a little bit of, of problems. I think science have said that uh, a well-managed diabetes is doesn't mean an extra risk for people when they get COVID. So uh, manage your diabetes properly, wash your hands, wear your mask. That's it. Yeah. The, and there here also, we do have to wear masks. If you are caught without one, then there's a pretty hefty fine that you're going to have to pay. Um, mm -hmm. and, and everyone is, you know, wearing masks, washing hands. And it's actually really great. You walk into a supermarket, there's hand sanitizers everywhere. They're wiping down the... Yeah the shopping carts, a lot of things that probably could have been happening before COVID. Yeah, um, yeah, but yeah. now things are, things are extra um, sterile here and it's, it's really good. Yeah. And then 
after that, Kevin also asked, did you have any DKA or severe hypo since your diagnosis? Uh, no, I've never had a severe hypo. I've never had to use a glucagon. I've never had DKA. So um, I've been uh, very lucky. Uh, I admit I've been very lucky, but at the same time, I've been managing my diabetes the way I have to manage. So I, I've, I've avoided all these situations. If, Sometimes it might happen. Uh, many, many people with type 1 diabetes have this condition at some point. Um, you know, the important thing is that you react as soon as possible and try to improve the aspects of diabetes management that you have to improve to avoid getting, getting again a DKA or, or a severe hypo. But in my case, I never, I've never undergone this situation and I've been very lucky. That's great. And another question, have you ever lost a CGM while you were racing? If so, yeah. how did you manage after that? It could have perfectly <laughs> been, uh, right? Because we are going so fast in the descents and, uh, and on the road. Uh, I haven't lost any CGM. We, we used to wear um, the little device of the CGM in our pockets. Uh, our pockets are very safe, so they, nothing falls. Um, with time, CGMs adapted, and then now you can wear it in your watch or your electronic device in the, in the bike. So it's even uh, it's more comfortable. And uh, yeah, I've never, I've never lost one, luckily. But uh, <laughs> I hope not. I hope I, I hope lucky. one that we lost. Yeah. yeah. And then also for if you're wearing any devices, I think medical tape has also evolved a lot over time. Mm -hmm. um, and it must be really exciting also for you all as Team Novo because I know you get different sponsorships and things. And because you have a dedicated medical team, you yeah. are always using, you know, some of the best things that are there. And probably throughout your training, you get to experiment with different things, even if it's down. I always tell people, I never thought I could be so much in love with a medical tape. But once you find <laughs> one that works for you to keep things on, yeah. Um, yeah. it's really you know, literally life-saving sometimes. Yes. So yes. yeah, that's, that's a great question. Do you yeah. know of any, do you, have, do you have any teammates that have lost any CGMs then? <laughs> I, I, th I think not. Uh, they, they've <laughs> probably lost it in the Indian airport or, you know, <laughs> like in the coffee shop. But <laughs> in the regular places. <laughs> in the regular places, yeah. Uh, not, not, on, not on a race. Like, not on the race. Okay, well, that's really good. So yeah, so join Team Novo and then you won't lose your devices. <laughs> <laughs> If so, and then if so, we like I said, we do have some young athletes um, that are listening, or if they couldn't join today, though, I'm sure they'll listen to the recording. And you, you meet aspiring young athletes everywhere, uh, because we're getting close to the top of the hour. What would be some advice that you have for upcoming Type One athletes? Well, uh, keep working really hard. Like uh, there's no secrets in professional sports. There's no secrets in the sport, in amateur sports. Uh, the key is work, work and work. So um, focus on it, uh, surround yourself with people that empowers you to keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Surround yourself with people that uh, educates you, that teaches you, that coaches you properly. Um, coaches have to be mentors, coaches and parents have to be uh, psychologists have to be well, your engine uh, pretty much so uh, keep working and surround yourself with uh, people that adds value to what you do and keep dreaming and then you'll get there you'll get there just it's a matter of not giving up okay before we close can I show the second video now of course of the race I think this would be a good um, time to show that one really quickly it's just a couple minutes here Let me get this one. Is it this one? Yeah. Rwanda. Yes. Uh, 
that ticket uh, crashes and you're still fighting, you're still aiming for the uh, end. Well, that helps you up. It's all it takes is one good game, one good moment, uh, and any game for you. So that is so much in alignment with some of the things that you told us about that, you know, people were, were saying you shouldn't race with type one. They weren't taking it seriously. Yeah. Um, and, and, oh, sorry, wait, it's still continuing. Sorry about that. It's still continued. I th YouTube just turns over and picks it up. <laughs> but as I was saying that that really is in alignment with a lot of the things that you were saying. People were saying, you know, you shouldn't race and they didn't take Team Novo seriously. And, you know, look at you all now. It's really wonderful to, to see that, you know, all of your success and everything that you're doing. Yeah. And my, my son could not be here to, to see this today, but before um, he left to go where he needed to be, I showed him that video and he had actually the chance to meet Phil totally by accident. We met him when they were here in Dubai for the race, um, him and Quentin um, and some others from the team. And when he saw Phil, he went, oh, like, it takes your breath away. So I think, you know, once we're past this time of COVID and some of the parents here, when, when Team Novo was in the UAE last time, they took their, their kids out and they met Team Novo and they know what I'm talking about. It's life changing. If you have a chance to take your child anywhere to see a race and Team Novo is there, I can't recommend it enough. There's kind of like life with diabetes before you meet Team Novo and there's life after meeting Team Novo. It's truly life-changing. It's really, really great. So I can't say enough about that. Um, super, super inspiring, the, the work that you do. And I just wanna thank you so much for taking the time to do this for us. Um, and also the time that you were taking before to plan to come here for the the face-to-face -face event And even though that didn't happen, I'm just really so grateful that you were with us today and answered all the questions um, that everyone had answered all my questions and Any any last words that you would um, like to to leave us with before before we go mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, to me, it's always a pleasure to share time with you with all of you because um we are all we are all on the same boat as we say in spanish uh you know we we're all living with type 1 diabetes or affected by type 1 diabetes uh, somehow and it's really important that we empower each other and that we that we know as uh kevin elias was uh, saying here was that they feel it feels like there's all the people who have diabetes and doing well yes of course and there's uh, and it's important to know it and there's people that is not doing well uh, mentally or uh, not knowing how to manage their diabetes and they are the ones that need our inspiration, our power and our help. So uh, talk to each other, help to each other and uh, let's all grow together with type 1 diabetes. That's wonderful. Thank you again so much. You are a superhero. Don't let anyone ever tell you any different and I know that hopefully we will see you soon face to face. Thank you so, so hopefully, much. Yes. Thank you yes. so much to everyone. Thank you everyone for joining. Have a wonderful day or afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.